What's up, guys? It's Chris. What's up guys, it's Chris, you're watching Plumbing Explained, and today we're going to be installing and reviewing one of my favorite, actually, scratch that, my favorite two-piece toilet on the market, the Toto Eco Drake. The 1.28 gallons per flush Eco Drake, 88 height, is the one we're going to be installing today, but the Eco Drake is the Eco Drake, it doesn't matter the height, it's just the best toilet on the market for the price. Like almost all two-piece toilets on the market today, Toto Eco Drakes require a tankable gasket, tankable bolts, and gaskets, and these are supplied by Toto in the kit that comes inside of your tank. So this is pretty much my uh, standard operating procedure for installing all two-piece toilets. I will remove the bowl first, uh, set it on top of a piece of cardboard, cut another piece of cardboard, set it on top of the bowl, then I will unbox the tank and set the tank on top of the cardboard that's sitting on top of the bowl. Now one thing I highly recommend doing before you bolt the tank to the bowl is check to make sure that your flush valve is tight. And you can also, while you have it up sitting like this, make sure that your fill valve is tight while you're at it. Although the fill valve can be tightened afterwards, the flush valve is much harder to get to once the tank has been tightened to the bowl. You'll actually have to remove the tank to tighten that flush valve if it is in fact a little loose and does leak. And uh, that will only be exposed once you flush the toilet. So you're better off just taking this extra step here and making sure that your flush valve is, is tight. And you can do that with a large pair of channel locks or like I'm going to do here with the oil filter wrench that I keep on my tool bag. Uh, this oil filter wrench comes in crazy handy for so many different things. If you're a plumber or a handyman out there, you should definitely consider putting one of these oil filter wrenches on your tool bag or on your truck. And while we're waiting for me to return with that oil filter wrench, if you could do me a huge favor, make sure that you go down and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free. Definitely do not try and tighten it this direction. That would be loosening it. You want to go ahead and make sure that the flush valve is completely tight that direction. You should get no turns out of it, um, and it should stay real solid. It typically has a marking when it comes from the factory. There will be like a, two lines that line up. This one didn't have it. Maybe they don't do it anymore, but uh, that's typical of Toto. They normally have a marking that lines up, and that's how you know it's tight. You're going to take your tank to bowl gasket that comes in the little kit, and you're going to slide that around the flush valve base there. It should line up. There's like maybe a little mini gap between that and the porcelain. That will seal up once the tank is bolted down to the bowl. So here's the rest of the tank to bowl kit. You've got two bolts, two rubber washers, uh, four metal washers, and four bolt uh, nuts. So you'll take your rubber or nylon washer, you will slide it up underneath the bolt, and then you will take that bolt and slide it through the hole in the tank. Uh, you don't want to put, so you should have bolt, rubber washer, that's it. When it comes through here, you'll put a metal washer on and a nut. You will tighten the nut down, the nut and metal washer down to the tank. Um... You can use a flathead screwdriver to make sure that the bolt doesn't move. I normally just stick my finger there and stop it from moving. And then after you get a little bite on it, it you get it tight enough where uh, you don't need it. You shouldn't really need a flathead. Um, you should be able to get it tight enough without really needing a flathead, just putting your hand down in there and holding it. But, I mean, if you, if you want to use a flathead, use a flathead. might be easier for some of you. I don't know. I have plumber's hands, so, you know, I've got callus and little strength to my fingers. If you don't, you might want to just use a flathead screwdriver. That's totally fine. Here's an example of how Toto is just better than other manufacturers. They just do things right. Like the double bolting of the tank to bowl bolts. Um, having, being able to bolt the bolts to the tank before mounting the tank to the bowl is just an example of how they care about the longevity of their toilets and want to make sure that they're installed properly and they're going to last. You know, with Toto, you do pay a little bit more than some of the other manufacturers, but you really do just get a higher quality product. The entire inside of the bowl is Santa Gloss, so that means all the way in through the P-trap. 
is all completely sanded gloss so it's all that glossy material all through it's not like that rough uh concrete-ish finish that you see there on the bottom of the tank that's how most toilets are all the way through and they've got like weird like stalagmites sometimes you know things that happen in manufacturing that just are unseen toto has really good quality control i mean i've just always been crazy impressed with toto my entire time plumbing even before i became out got, went out on my own and uh you know was selling the product to the customer i i was always just felt so comfortable um installing toto and you know putting those in for our customers when i was an apprentice they've i've just been working with toto forever and i just the product and the brand is so far above anything else you will get uh for anything similar in price to me if you can afford it, it doesn't make any sense to go any other direction than Toto, especially uh, with their one-piece models. But the Drake is, without a doubt, the most superior two-piece toilet uh, in its class. I mean, I just don't see anything that really competes with it. I know they show Toto's, I mean, uh, American Standards and stuff like that that'll flush golf balls. But <clears throat> my question is... Yeah, the toilet will flush golf balls and whatnot, but it doesn't put enough water out to move those golf balls down the sewer system. So, I mean, in reality, you're kind of doing yourself an injustice by putting a toilet in that'll flush stuff. That's just going to get clogged in your sewer system and cause your sewer system problems. So here we are. We're going to be bolting the tank to the bowl, which this is a really crucial process. A lot of guys kind of get sketched out about this part. I mean, I've replaced a lot of cracked tanks from guys that over tighten the biggest thing that i the biggest piece of advice i guess i could give you um especially when working with totos but really any two-piece toilet is look on the bowl where the tank mounts you'll always see there's like these these bumps okay now you want to kind of pressure the tank forward a little bit not too much but a little bit and then tighten each side little by little um tighten each side little by little by while keeping a little bit of pressure forward like towards you on the tank and once it seats down on the back or once it seats down on the front you release that pressure because there will be two little lumps on the front of the uh tank where the tank is meant to sit to i'm going to show you that in a second here but once the the front mounts and seat once the front uh seats up the back will seat up real easy. So you let off the tension that you have on the front and uh, just let it go and tighten it down a little bit more. And as you will see, the gap will close. And this is just normal on the Drake. Um, there's always a slight little more gap on the back side, on the side with the flush valve uh, than there is on the opposite side. I'm not sure the real reasoning behind that. Uh, something about manufacturing causes this. It doesn't show up front but there's always a slight gap on the side with the fill valve, uh, a, a little more gap than there is on the other side. It's showing a little much here because of the angle of the camera, but uh, yeah, there will always be a slight more gap on the side with the flush valve. I mean, fill valve, I'm sorry, excuse me. So you always wanna make sure that you don't over tighten the tank uh, to the bowl. It's definitely very important. Um, but you always want to make sure that the tank is very solid. You don't want really any play on your tank. So after I'm done tightening it, I'll always kind of give it a little wiggle. You know, don't put any real muscle into it, but you should not be able to get any real movement out of your tank. Now, if you're putting muscle into it, you probably get movement out of it no matter how tight it is. But um, if you're just checking to make sure your tank is tight, you want to make sure it's sitting on those two lumps up front. The lump in back and um, you want to give it a little wiggle make sure that it's nice and tight there's no you're not hearing the porcelain kind of tap on each other it should be seated down onto itself so when I got to this call I noticed that the angle stop would not shut down it was a quarter turn angle stop and with quarter turn angle stops, if it won't shut off real easily, do not try and force it to shut off. It's very likely the handle will break off or you will cause some sort of problem. I mean, that's fairly common with any angle stop that won't shut off easily. Don't try and force it, but specifically with quarter turn angle stops. 
So anytime you are encountering an angle stop that won't shut off, I highly recommend you go and shut the water off to the home or building. Um, if you have to, let your neighbors know you had to shut the water down for an emergency and change that angle stop as quick as possible. I've got a few videos uh, on how to change angle stops, so you can check out my videos. They're great videos on how to change angle stops. They make it real easy for you, and I explain every step of the way. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I highly recommend always replacing the closet bolts and always using two wax rings whenever setting a toilet. It's just going to ensure that everything goes good for you. It's going to make sure that you get a good seal. It's not going to blow out when you plunge it. And replacing the closet bolts is just a must. Even if you only use one wax ring, you absolutely must replace the closet bolts every time you pull a toilet. Every single time. And please bolt those closet bolts to the closet flange. Don't just leave them dangling there or use that little plastic thing. Please do it right and bolt them to the flange. Think of the next guy. So now we're on to the next step, which is going to be bolting the toilet to the flange or the floor. I mean, it's basically bolting it to the flange, but it's mounted on top of the floor. So you're going to take these little plastic things, these little round plastic things for the bowl caps. They, and you're going to flip it to the side that says this side up and you're going to set that side up. I'm about to show you what those little plastic things look like right now. They're little clear plastic round things. And one side says this side up. And sometimes it's good to maybe feel in there and make sure that's the side that it's actually printed on. That's the side that's meant to be this side up. Because if it's the wrong side, the, uh, the bowl cap will not snap onto it. And um, if you've already had to cut your closet bolt, possibly damaging the threads <laughs> it can just be a headache so make sure that you get the bowl cap covers on properly the side that says this side up needs to be facing up and i know that sounds super basic and simple can't tell you how many times i've had to go out and correct this so you'll put your bowl cap cover down then you will put your metal washer and then your closet bolt nut and you will tighten the closet bolt nut down which will tighten the toilet down to the floor and the flange. What I always like to do after I've got my closet bolts uh, tightened, um, and you don't have to tighten these like you know, like you did the tank. You can tighten one side and then the other. It's not. It won't really make a difference. Um, after I do this, I'll make sure that the uh, bowl is nice and tight to the floor. I, I'm not getting any rocking out of it. I shouldn't get really any movement at all. I like to press up on the uh, front of the bowl too, after tightening up the supply line, of course. But uh, then I like to tight. I like to, you know, grab both sides, the little wings there. I grab them and I try and rock the the uh, toilet. And then I will grab onto the front of the bowl and push down to make sure that, you know, kind of simulating like somebody sitting down on the front there, to make sure that it's good front to back. And this one was a little loose, so I had to apply a shim, um, which you see right there. And I highly recommend staying away from the plastic shims. I know you probably think the plastic means more sturdy. It's really just going to be more of a pain in the butt when it comes to having to cut it down. So what I like to do is I take my rubber shim and I, I wedge it in uh, the area that requires a shim. And then I kind of lift up a little bit on the front of the toilet there, or whatever side needs the shim. Typically, it's the front right there. I lift up a little bit, you know, put a little little tiny bit of muscle into it, and I wedge that shim in a little bit more. And then I'll take a razor blade and cut that shim back so you can't see it, and it we'll hide it with some uh, silicone caulk. Did you just hear that flush, though? I mean, that to me is one of the most attractive things about the Toto toilets is their flushing power. The fact that they don't do the little swirl and drop, the little trickle down the side and go, or fill up like it's clogged and drop. The Toto toilets drop. I mean, it's a nice, satisfying sound, the sound of that Toto flush. Am I right? 
And what provides us with that very satisfying sounding flush is the insides of the Toto toilet, the three inch ultra wide flush valve, the quirky quiet fill fill valve, which fills ultra fast, but is extremely quiet. Even the guys at Fluid Master will tell you the Corky Quiet Fill is quieter than any product they make. I've actually had conversations with guys over there at Fluid Master about how they're trying to catch up to the Corky Quiet Fill Fill valves. So, like I said, you just get a very high quality product with Toto. Um, they make all kinds of different toilets from the Entrada to the Drake to the Supremes to the Ultra Maxes to the Top Hats. I mean, they've got $5,000 toilets. Toto's got everything. And you won't be disappointed with any of their product. I, I can guarantee you that. Um, I put my name behind Toto. They don't pay me anything. I don't know anybody at Toto. But I just have always recommended them. I've always been very satisfied with their product. And I stand behind them. Alright, so that's how you assemble and install the two-piece Toto Eco Drake. I also gave you guys my review on the Eco Drake and Toto as a company. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, make sure that you're subscribed. If you want to see more content like this or just stay up to date with the channel, ring the bell. Leave a comment.